want to thank um, thank you for that worship. That was really good. For the drum too. Yeah, that was really good. Watch the chord. And uh, so I just want to um, thank everybody for coming out. We're we're starting to fill up in here today. And how many were blessed last week to hear our brother Dan? And uh, he has come with another topic tonight, and um, got a few more handouts to uh, to share with you. And I just want to welcome the, the people viewing online, and I just pray that this message uh, blesses you. And it's coming through uh, pretty clear. I've been uh, testing it here. We're, we're getting our video quality up. Praise the Lord. So, so Dan, um, Dan is an author of a few books, and... Um, and I'll just let him talk about that. But come on up, Dan, and we really appreciate you coming out. Can everybody hear okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, brother. Thank you. Okay, Kevin's going to be passing out an um, information sheet that we'll kind of go over. I have two sheets today. And um, we're talking about the Book of Revelations. Okay, that's last week. Last week we, we is it on? Is it on? Is it on? Is it, on? Oh, it's on. Is it plugged in? Yeah. Which one? Uh, I don't know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me now? There you go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now. Okay, let's everybody get those, get those sheets. Um, last week we talked about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And that, that came out of uh, chapter 6 in the book of Revelations. This week I... Um, there's a lot of mysteries that are solved in the book of Revelations. So I just wanted to quickly, the sheet that I gave you, it just kind of mentioned a lot of the mysteries that are in that book. And so I just want to go through them real quick. And then today, go, we want to we wanna, you know, take a look at the scriptures that solve two mysteries. Number one, the tribulation period. When does it begin? When is it going to happen? Does the scripture tell us? And number two, the rapture of the church. When's it going to happen? What did the scripture say about when the rapture of the church is going to happen? Okay, we're going to, those are the two mysteries that we're going to examine the scriptures that explain that today. Okay, yeah. first we start with um, Amos 3.7. Surely the Lord will do nothing but he reveal his secret unto the servants, the prophets. So what God is saying, he, he, he revealed to Amos, Amos wrote this, that God always wants the word out to the people, what he's going to do, so that people know what's going to happen before it happens. I mean, it makes it makes a lot of sense that, you know, he, he doesn't want to just do something and everybody's just kind of standing around wondering, gee, what was that all about? What happened? Okay. Okay, and Isaiah, I'm, I'm going to bring this scripture out every every time I'm up here. Because this is the way that knowledge is gotten from the scriptures. Isaiah 28, 9 through 10 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's the way that knowledge is um, transferred in the scriptures. You, You have to get a piece here. There's a piece over in this book, a piece in that book, and you take these pieces and you put them together, and you and you got a picture, and you can understand the topic, whatever it is that you're trying to research. Okay, the prophets describe events in, in the book of Revelation. You can find in Ezekiel, he talks about the earth wobbling like a drunk, knocked out of its axis. That's in the scriptures. When's that going to happen? Um, but the book... But the order of events is established by the book of Revelations. So the prophets, they elaborate and they describe certain events, but the book of Revelations puts those events in order. You can't really tell you know, what order they're going to be in uh, as the prophets are given their information, but you can when you look at the book of Revelations. Okay. 
Okay, so um, the mysteries that are in Revelation that, that's, that are solved, we got chapters 1 through 3, you've got the seven churches of Asia Minor. And, uh, you know, uh, as I read through those, you know, I thought about different denominations. And so the question is, are they seven denominations of, of today? Uh, some of the denominations of today that believe that Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, are... Baptists, Pentecostals, I think Presbyterians and Methodists, Assemblies of God, Lutheran, non-denominational. I don't know all the different doctrines or the, the variations, but maybe those seven churches of Asia Minor were a lot like the different denominations that we see today. They're all different, and uh, they worship differently, they believe differently, but I think that they have in common that they believe Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, yeah. that he died, yeah, awesome. that he died for all of us, yeah. right? And that those that, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and, um, and that's how you're saved. Just believe in him, uh, having faith in him. All right, chapter 4, who are, the, who are the four beasts round about the throne? That's Revelations 4, 6. Uh, chapter 5, who are... Who is the only person worthy to open the book with the seven seals? And that's an easy one to answer. Uh, chapter 6. Who are the four horsemen of the apocalypse? We went over that last week. By the way, if anybody wasn't here last week and you'd like a copy of the information uh, that I passed out, I'll be glad to give you a, a copy of it. I have some extras here. All right, does the sixth seal summarize the prophecies of the great day of the Lord, his wrath poured out upon earth. And is the great earthquake of Revelation 6.12 the same great earthquake described by Revelation 16.18-21? Uh, the Revelation 6.12, that's the uh, one of the seals that are opened on the back of the book. Uh, by Jesus opens the seals, the seven seals. He's the only one that can do that. And then uh, as the story is being developed in chapter uh, 16, it talks about, the, at the very end, this tremendous earthquake and describes what happens. And so uh, they, they're both called a great earthquake. And so um, the question is, is, is that the same earthquake? But anyhow, we, uh, that's something you have to go into in more detail. Right, who are the 144,000 souls saved during the tribulation? That's Revelation 7, 4. Um, what event begins the tribulation? Okay, and that quotes a couple of scriptures there that you can uh, you can read. Who, who is implied to be responsible for the plagues of the first three and a half years of the tribulation? That's Revelation 11, 3 through 6, and 10. Chapter 9, who are the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates? They get loose to kill one-third of the men on earth. They're, they're actually, I don't know if you guys know it, but um, I only found the names of three evil spirits that are in the scriptures. There's Satan, there's Beelzebub, and there's who's, who's the king of the bottomless pit? Uh, Apollyon. Yeah, Apollyon. Those are the three that are three names that we have. And then these are four other spirits that are bound at the Great River Euphrates. So that's seven. And then um, in Revelations 12, it talks about the the beast with seven heads. So. You know, it ties in that uh, those seven heads are the seven evil spirits that were cast down from heaven. We don't have a name for the four, but they're responsible for killing a third of the uh, men on earth in, in the tribulation period. Um, chapter 10, who is the mighty angel that gives the little book to John? And what is in the little book? That was a mystery for me, to me for a long time. What was that like? What is this little book? This all of a sudden shows up in Revelations. In chapter 11, who are the two witnesses and what is their role in the tribulation? 
And what happens when the seventh trumpet is blown? There's a couple of scriptures there you can read. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over that on the second uh, page here that I'm passing out. Uh, chapter 12, who are the seven heads of the red dragon? I, I already told you the, the names of the three evil spirits that we know and four that we don't know. Who is the red dragon? That's in chapter 12. And who is the woman with the crown of 12 stars? You know? <laughs> it's, inter it's really interesting. I, I, I mean, to me, it's like... To me... It's like uh, trying to find a way across the creek, and all of a sudden I'll see, you'll see some rocks that you can step on to cross the creek, yeah. and that's kind of the way that the scriptures are to me, is you go from one scripture to the next, and you can get across and you can understand whatever it is you're trying to understand. Mm. Okay. Um, chapter... 13, and this is this one is really heavy. Who are the two beasts in <coughs> chapter 13? That's 13.1 uh, and 13.11. Uh, uh, and what is a beast? You know, uh, Daniel 7.3, he refers to four beasts. And then he goes on <coughs> to describe the beasts. And the beasts are kingdoms. They're not men. You know, he's not talking about a man being a beast. He's talking about whole kingdoms. So Daniel describes um, in chapter seven. He describes these four beasts. And as a matter of fact, the, the fourth beast that he describes, I believe, is the the beast of uh, thirteen one. I believe it's the same beast. And yeah, we'll go into that some other time, maybe. Uh, who is the man of uh, Revelations 13, 18 of the riddle? There's a man. That's, there's a riddle that's given. You know, this is one of the first things. I love riddles. I mean, I'm, I'm a freak for riddles. I just think they're fun, you know? And I started off studying this riddle, and, and I figured it out. I mean, I think the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. And that's then after that, I, I decided to read more of the book of Revelation, and that's where I started trying to understand Revelation. I thought, well, if I, if I can figure that part out, maybe I can understand some of the others. And so over a period of time, and it's taken you know, quite a bit of time, I've just kind of soaked in, in the uh, book of Revelation, and things have just kind of come to me. All the things I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys now, this is the way I got it. Um, what was the deadly head wound that was healed? Chapter 13, it refers to this deadly head wound uh, to the... Um, red dragon that was healed. Uh, so what is that? And what is the image of the beast? That's interesting. What is the mark in their right hand or their forehead? And that's interesting. And it's different than what, what you hear. <laughs> it's different. Than what you hear uh, with a lot of the guys that you, you know, the, the preachers that you hear. I mean, some of the things that I hear, I can't believe. I mean, the the four horsemen that we talked about last week, I heard one preacher saying that the Pope was one of the four horsemen. He was on the air <clears throat> preaching that. I thought, you could be kidding me. That's where did that come from? You know, I mean, you can't just you can't just see something in current events and then and then stick it into uh, the scriptures and say, well, that fits right there. You know, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, the little book. What is the abomination of desolation? That's uh, it's in the little book, and, and we'll have to. I didn't know what the little book was for a long time. I'll tell you guys when I when we talk about that. I'll tell you how I just I just happened to stumble across it, and I and I saw it, and I saw some scriptures there that made sense, and it all fit together. So I know I know what the little book is, and what is the skill and understanding given to Daniel by the angel Gabriel? This is Daniel 9:22. Daniel was wondering about all these things that he was, these visions that he was having, and Gabriel appeared to him and, and said he was going to give him some uh, some wisdom and some understanding. The next the next uh, question: How many of our years 
was one of Daniel's prophetic days. This is the understanding and the skill that Gabriel gave him. So he could understand, you know, what a year, how, how do you compare a year with these prophetic days that he was being, being told? And who set up the abomination of desolation? This is Daniel 12, 11. And who is the false prophet? <laughs> this is in uh, the little book. <laughs> it sounds, you guys are looking at me and kind of doubting, doubting a lot of this stuff I know, but you'll see. Okay, chapter 14. Is this new inf Basically, look, I, I'm just going to present to you guys the scriptures about these things, and you guys may or may not come to the same conclusion that I've come to. Okay, that's, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think you will, because it's pretty obvious. But, but that's really what I'm presenting to you guys is scriptures. I'm not going to just give you some made-up opinion about something because of the current events. You know, that might fit. It might fit in the current events. It's, it didn't do that. All right now, chapter 14. Is this new information or a summary of the high points of the tribulation presented in order of importance? Yeah, chapter 14 has a list of um, things that are uh, going to happen. And it really, it is, it is a summary of uh, tribulation, of the book of tribulation. God, in the first four or five points, uh, involve the Jewish uh, people getting saved. In chapter 7 it talks about the Jews that come to, to believe in Jesus as the Messiah during the tribulation period. And the, for about the first five things, this is a high, high priority on God's list of priorities. And when you read chapter 14 you can see about the first five uh, statements you know, are about that. All right, chapter 15 is this what is going on in heaven after the rapture of the church? Uh, chapter 16 is the great day of the Lord, the wrath of God poured out upon the earth, upon all mankind left behind after the church rapture. There's a scripture in, um, in Revelations, like maybe uh, chapter 10, where, where it, it talks oh, the four angels that are loose that are tied up at the great river Euphrates it says that they were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year and I thought wow what am I supposed to do with that so I, I tried to add up all the time to see if that made any significance and I, I couldn't figure it out at first and then all of a sudden it came to me that in the scriptures the scriptures talk about the day, the great day of the Lord, how he is going to, his wrath is going to be poured out. That's the day of the Lord. So all of the scriptures that you see that talk about the day of the Lord, uh, those four angels are going to be responsible for seeing to it that, that you know, his will is fulfilled with his day. The one hour, there's about four or five places in uh, Revelations chapter 17, I think it talks about the what happens in one hour, the mystery of Babylon the Great. So all of those those four or five scriptures about the one hour, they fit right there. Uh, those four angels are going to fulfill that. And so, you know, when it talks about these, uh, you know, an hour, a day, a month, or a year, that's that's what he's referring to. He's referring to all of the, the times in scripture that he's described these things and what's going to happen during that time period. Okay, so um, chapter 17, who is Mystery Babylon the Great? Chapter 18, what happens to Mystery Babylon the Great in one hour? And who's responsible for it? Who did it? Chapter 19, after the tribulation, in Revelations 19, 1, is there a marriage supper of the Lamb? And will the beast and the false prophet be judged? Chapter 20, will the Lord Jesus live forever in heaven with us? or on earth with us. There are scriptures that say there. Can you hear me now? Okay. Much better. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, there are scriptures that say where, where we're going to be in eternity. You, you know, most people think we're going to be going to heaven somewhere. 
but there are there actually are scriptures in, in Ezekiel that say that the soles of his feet are going to be touching the earth. So he is going to be living on earth with us. He's going to have a sanctuary built in um, by Jerusalem, and, and, and the descriptions are in Ezekiel talks about that. So um, anyhow, that's a, in chapter 20. Uh, who does the Lord appoint to be king over Israel forever? What what country? What country no longer owns land after the tribulation? What, what country loses all of its all its land? And uh, what what is the river of living water? You can read that in Ezekiel 47 2, to, two through 10. Okay, in chapter 21, what are the dimensions of the New Jerusalem? holy city and how did the angel measure the living area inside the city when I was researching this I saw online guys had done had done pictures of the city halfway across the United States I mean it, it's amazing uh, uh, it was good good artwork but the, the thing is uh, well we have to just kind of go into it it's not it's not really that big it's in fact it's the same size as it is going to be during the millennium period, it's the same size. The, the, the thing that the, the, the mistake that the guy made was he, he measured the living area as if it was just all single story houses and he, and he just measured the ground. So you'd have to have half the United States to accommodate the city. But these are, these are high rise buildings. I'll just tell you guys right up front. We're talking about multi story buildings that he's got inside the city. It tells how it's a, it's a cube and it tells how high the walls are. So when this city that he's building has multi-story uh, buildings inside, so you don't need to have half the United States uh, to have all the living quarters, um, because it tells how many I think it tells how many people are going to actually be living there. Okay, in chapter 22. What does the future New World Order look like? Where did, where did the sinners outside the New Jerusalem city come from? Revelations 22:15. I have to tell you, I, I don't know the answer to that question because um, you know, it says there's going to be a great white throne judgment and that um, people are going to be cast into the lake of fire. You're, you're either going to be a lamb on the lamb on the right right side with the lambs or you're going to be with the goats on the left. And the goats on the left get cast into the lake of fire and the lambs on the right are saved. And so I don't know how you, where these people came from. So this is an interesting <coughs> question. So sometimes, you know, as we're discussing this stuff, we just might have to throw it out for, you know, do some brainstorming and see if we can figure it out. Okay, now the second page, we're going to talk about two mysteries, the solution to two mysteries. Kevin, I'm, my friend. Um, the, the tribulation timeline and the rapture of the church. We're going to look at the scriptures uh, that refer to these two topics and see if it makes any sense. Some people are still looking at me skeptically. <laughs> Huh? Okay. okay, good, good. Yeah. Okay. The skeptic look is the best part of every mystery. The skepticism? The skeptic, the skeptic look is the best part of every mystery. Yeah, that's right. There okay. you go. Huh? huh? Really? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It means he didn't already know the answer, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 What, uh, what is the first event? Of, of the tribulation, what happens to start it? The scripture, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, Jerusalem. Uh, he, Jesus is, he says, don't, did we, we don't have that scripture, do we? I didn't give you that scripture to read. Okay. First, second Kings. Um, yeah, go ahead. 
Okay. Lillian, read that one. Second Kings. I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and it is Second Kings 23:13. Then the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem, which were on the south of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth. The abomination of the Sidians for Cheshmaj, the abomination of Moab. Moab Moabites and for Milcon, Milcon, the abomination of the people of Ammon. Okay, the point to that is that God uses that word abomination to represent or to describe a false god. Yeah. Okay, that's what he just talked about three different false gods right there, three different nations, and he used the word abomination. So, Jesus said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. And then I believe he goes on to say, Don't even bother to go back into your house to get your belongings, but flee. <laughs> get out of there. Uh, I should have uh, had that scripture uh, read also. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Jerusalem is going to be invaded. And that's that is uh, what starts the tribulation period. Okay. Um, what window of time? Okay. Jesus said, "Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near." That's Matthew 24:32. Israel is compared to a fig tree. In Joel 1, 7, and 9. L Lillian? Okay. He has laid waste my vine and ruined my fig tree. He has stripped it bare and thrown it away. Its branches are made white. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The grain offerings and the drink offerings have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest born who ministered to the Lord. Okay, Israel, Israel is uh, referred to as a fig tree. Uh, it's kind of a um, metaphor. And um, Israel became a nation in 1948. So when the fig tree begins to sprout its leaves and become tender, it starts sprouting its leaves, that's when Israel, be Israel who's compared to the fig tree, uh, became a nation again. And that was in 1948. And then he goes on to say, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things, and he names off all these things in Matthew 24, 3 through 35, be fulfilled. These things include the tribulation and return of Jesus to earth. From the time Israel becomes a nation to the return of Jesus to earth, a generation shall not pass away. So the question is, how long is a generation? Okay, in Psalms 90.10, it says that a generation is 70 years, 80 if they're strong. So 70 to 80 years. And I believe right now the, the actual average is what, maybe around 75 or so? I don't, I don't know the exact number. But it's between 70 and 80 from the census. I guess the Census Bureau keeps those averages. Um, earliest tribulation can be finished would be 1948 when Israel became a nation plus 70 years would be 2018. That would be the earliest. That's when a generation um, would pass away at, their, at the earliest. The latest the tribulation uh, could uh, be finished is uh, 1948 plus 80 years or two, 2028. So that's the window. We, have, we don't know what day, but we know within that 10 year period, sometime between 2018 and 2028, according to those scriptures, um, is, the, is the window that would fit what he said. Okay, how long will the tribulation last? 
See, and I've heard I've heard this uh, from preachers on TV. And they say it's seven years. They always say it's seven years. And I'm thinking, where'd you get that? Where's it say seven years? I don't know where they... They never tell you where they get stuff. A lot of times they just kind of tell you stuff. But Daniel 8.14 says that the host and the sanctuary would be trodden underfoot for 2,300 days. The, the host meaning... Um, the Jewish people and the sanctuary meaning Jerusalem will be trodden underfoot for 2300 days that is 6.3 years is what it works out to okay the earliest it can begin would be 2018 minus 6.3 years or 2011.7 which is already passed and hasn't started yet the latest that it can begin would be 2028 minus 6.3 years or 2021.7. So that is the window of, uh, according to you know what we've been told, and according to these scriptures, that's the window of opportunity that kind of fits these scriptures. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I never had a revelation. I didn't hear a voice. Nothing like that. Just looking at the scriptures and, and what we're being told, this is what fits it. Okay, now the rapture of the church. There's a lot of controversy about the rapture of the church. Is it gonna? Is, there's pre-tribulation, there's mid-tribulation, and there's post-tribulation theories by different preachers that you, you hear. I, I never really have listened to all of their reasoning, but but I know that they argue about it. But let's, we're going to look at what the scripture has to say about, about the rapture and see what it says and, and not listen to uh, you know, arguments. Okay, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So Paul tells us that at the last trumpet is when um, the rapture happens. Okay? According to that scripture. Revelation 8, 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay? He didn't give eight trumpets. He didn't give five trumpets. He gave seven trumpets, and Paul's talking about the last trumpet, which would be the seventh trumpet. Okay. Revelations 10:7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. So he's saying the same thing that Paul said in 1 Corinthians, that when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet the mystery will be finished that's when the rapture will happen revelations 11 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and then it goes on to say at revelations 11 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. The prophets, all the prophets that we read all the time in the scriptures. You see it right here. That's when they're going to get their reward. And to the saints, and them that fear thy name, shall small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So those one, two, three, four, five scriptures are all consistent. It's like it says a piece here, piece there, piece over there. You take these pieces and you consider them all together. And you can see that the, the rapture happens right there in chapter 11 of the book of Revelations. And what was surprising to me is, you know, he talks about the resurrection. There's a resurrection that goes on right here. The Old, Old Testament prophets, they receive their reward. But then later on in uh, chapter 20, 
It talks about the great white throne judgment, and it talks about um, other rewards that are given out. So that that great white throne judgment happens after the 1,000 year millennium, that, where Jesus has been living on Earth. So so the thing is, and we can get it, go into that a little more detail maybe some other time. But there were there are going to be two resurrections, the one that happens in the middle of the tribulation. And the one that happens after the millennium, after Jesus has been on earth for a thousand, a thousand years. Um, so you know, you just kind of have to, you kind of have to jump into the Book of Revelations and live there. You know, you have to read it, let it soak in, and um, and then gradually over a period of time, you can kind of begin to understand what, you know, how all that, all how it all fits together. There's still a lot of stuff in there that I don't. Uh, I don't know what, what it exactly means, you know. Uh, there's a lot of pictures and things that are there that are hard to understand, but, uh, you know, I just keep working at it. Anyhow, any questions? That's, that's pretty much it. Yes? Yes. And you would put it down and thought maybe it could be denominations? Uh, yeah, it's just a theory. That's, that's a, just a theory. I, yeah. That's not, yeah. 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 I read it, I see it as the seven different conditions of the whole body of Christ. And if you really stop and think about, about what I'm saying, I'm in one spiritual place and one spiritual condition. Heaven's at a different spiritual place and a different spiritual condition. But if you look at it in that concept, what to me it would be the condition of the body of Christ, where they are at. And if you notice, God always corrects and he comes back, but I love you and if you will repent, then I will do this. And when we look at that uh, personality of Christ like that, then it gives us a hope. And if we don't have that concept, yes, he's safe because he loves us. But then he comes back to life. If you'll repent, if you'll change, and I will question you what to do. That's how I perceive it when I read that. Right. I'm going to study all the seven churches. Well, it, it could be. It could be. Yeah. You know. I'm just throwing it out You know, where, um, you know, it's just, it's, it, it was just my uh, my theory that uh, we have all these denominations and that they, you know, as long as they believe that Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, Amen. that he died for them, then they're saved. And I think that, you know, I think Paul said something about there would be some people that would be saved, but just barely, like a man escaping through a wall of flames, that their works were going to be burned up. So I think that there are some denominations, some some teachings that are out there that are just, you barely, they barely get saved, and then they go off in the left field someplace, teaching something that's not scriptural. And so, uh, you know, and I'm, I don't know exactly, I'm not saying who they are, uh, but I think that that happens. And so I think that that you know the foundation is that you believe that and you have faith that Jesus died for you, and that he, He's your Savior, and that God forgives you for all all your sins because of Him. I think that's the foundation, and then from that point on, I think that people people and denominations go in all kinds of directions. You know. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, I, I, yeah, I any to, oh another question? Okay. Doesn't the scripture say that for for the sake of the elect that he would shorten the day least they be deceived? Isn't that in the word of God too? Or my house? Yeah, the, the tribulation period he said he was gonna shorten it because man would be totally wiped out. You know, I mean there are there are uh, in the old testament prophets are talking about the earth being knocked off its axis and wobbling like a drunk. I mean, it, it sounds like nuclear weapons are being used so frequently by so many different people that it actually, they're so powerful, they actually affect the Earth's gravity. They talked about the, the, the sun, the, they talked about the sunlight not being able to get through. I think it talks about the um, time, that it would, you know, in the middle of the afternoon it would be dark. I mean, everything's going to get all messed up. The Earth turns on an axis. And, and I guess if these explosions are more powerful enough, it could affect the axis that it's on. And pretty soon, it's like the North Pole. The North Pole, you know, depends on the season. It's light almost all day during, during certain parts of the year. 
and then it's dark almost all day during other times of the year. So, um, you know, all of that, all of those kinds of things are going to happen. But, but the thing is, the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon mankind after the tribulation. In the first three and a half years of tribulation, you have a lot of these these things happening with about one third the, the force and, and the results that they happen later. Later, he, he cranks up the volume full force, his wrath. And, and it's not one third of men killed anymore. I mean, it's starting to get them all practically wiped out off the face of the earth. Men are hiding in caves and rocks. And, you know, I understand that there are a lot of the elites that have, have already built these underground bunkers and dug them in the mountains and what have you. I think they're going to hide there. In Denver. Yeah, in Denver. In case that there's these nuclear wars that go on, they're going to be able to hide and they're going to be able to ride it out. you got plenty of food there. Just go ahead. If I may add something, I find it just so ironic how um, the government is so quick to want to take God out of everything. The government system, the churches, the schools. But yet, these elite are also preparing for something. So it's kind of an oxymoron how they're, they want to take them out. Yeah, well, they, yeah, man, well, man wants to make his own decisions. He doesn't want God telling him what to do. You know, a lot of the unbelievers, they, they, they just want to decide for themselves. That's why they decide they don't want to go along with um, marriage. You know, the, you know what, you know what is marriage? What is right? So forth. They, I will walk carefully on that issue. We're online. Yeah. Uh, you know, but they 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 want to they want to change things. They just want to uh, make things the way uh, that they want them, and they don't want to really go along with what the God has said is the proper way of doing things. Man wants to make things in his. Image. Yeah, man wants to do things in his own image. You know, in um, the book of uh, uh, chapter uh, 13 in Revelations, it talks about um, the the devil, the power. And the position of the devil is handed over to this beast, this first beast, and that this first beast is, has all of his power um, and and his authority and his position. You see, but what is the devil's position and authority? Think about it. The devil won the the authority here in the earth from Adam and from Eve. He won it because he. He got them to eat the fruit that they were told not to eat. So that was the first sin. So that's that's where he won the authority in the earth. But then later Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died for all of us. And he won back the authority. And he said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So he now has the authority. And he turned around and gave us authority over serpents and devils and demons. So all of us that believe in him, the devil doesn't have authority over us. You follow? So the authority of the devil only applies to those that don't believe in Jesus. You know, his position, his authority, his power, I guess, uh, it has an effect upon them and, and, and the kind of decisions and what have you, changing things. He wanted to change things. He wanted to make the rules. Anyhow, um, I can go on and on with that. I think that's about it. Any more questions? Uh, I have a question. Are yeah. we just going to go through this revelation by ourselves, or are you going to touch upon these weeks? We're going to try to have them come back. Okay. We can encourage them to come back and, and, and hit on these things uh, yeah. in the future as as a, as, a, as an opportunity. Right. You know, yeah. So it's good. You know, It kind of gives us another dimension in the group, right? Uh, um, you know, um, the book of Revelations is a very interesting book. I mean, it tells you a lot about the future. And, and you know, the thing is that I'm just presenting to you the scriptures and then telling you my conclusions from the scriptures. You know, if, if you have a different conclusion, that's fine. It's up to you. But I'm giving you the, the scriptures that I have found that make sense to me and help me conclude that, that this means this. <coughs> So, yeah. Could you could you explain what you're talking about? Is it in the end times the Earth's axis will shift? Right. 
because it's already happened twice on two big earthquakes we've had recently the scientifically they know it kicked the earth off its axis. Is that right? right. So that's already happened twice. Yes. Yeah, but we both if I'm right. Go ahead. Uh, the the shift in the Axis, the Earth's axis has been really small in terms of degree, right. like a, a, a part of a degree, or maybe even a degree. What, he, what Dan's talking about, and, and this this is all theory because it hasn't happened. But but the amount of, of destruction, the amount of force generated by nuclear weapons, and we're talking on an order of magnitude of 100, 200, 300, 500 kilotons could shift the Earth, we're talking like two or three degrees as opposed to parts of one degree. Or, and the, the shift is so huge. And, and everything he talks about, it, it's, it's all been um, theorized, and they're, they're pretty sure what he's talking about, the nuclear winter. There's so much garbage that's generated in a nuclear blast that where can it go? It can only go so far. It goes up into the stratosphere, and then it's held in place by the atmosphere. And you got so much junk up there that literally, like he was saying, sunlight cannot penetrate. And then that's basically the definition of nuclear winter, when the sun's still shining, but you can't see it because you have all this nuclear cloud up above you. So, you know, think of the effects of that, like he was talking about it. The, the entire Earth becomes Alaska, where it's dark all the time, or almost all the time. And even when it's even when the sun is able to penetrate, it only penetrates a few areas. And now you're talking about all these cataclysmic factors coming into alignment like a perfect storm. You got no sun, you got no growth, you got no food, you got the climate starts to shift because of that. And you're talking about you know global warming. This would be global cooling on an order of magnitude that we you know that 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 man has never seen. <coughs> You know, one yeah, of the oceans, Rory. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, we're not, were they talking about global warming, the same deal. You, you do research on global warming, they're talking about one or two degrees, which doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot. Imagine global cooling like 10 or 20 degrees like that. That would be summer, winter, boom, boom, one day. Wow. Right. You know, the whole thing is that um, you know, we get frustrated. We look around and we see people doing some ungodly stuff. But, you know, eventually they're going to reap what they sow. Absolutely. And as a Christian, you know, sometimes I, I thank God that I, I, I know that. And I see people getting away with things, and, I, and you just hate it. You know, you just think, boy, I'd like to straighten these people out. Yeah. But you just can know eventually they will be oh, yeah. reaping a, a harvest for, for what they've sown. And they might be enjoying themselves for a season. <laughs> but once that season's over... Um, they're going to be living in eternity. That's a long time, you know, uh, for the for the, all the ways that they've lived and the things that they've done. So, but yeah, it's a matter of degrees. What you're saying really uh, kind of supports this that things have already kind of happened a little bit, and this is saying that it's going to be a lot, a big shift, and you're going to uh, that the sun is going to go down in the middle of the afternoon, and so it you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, leads you to believe that the axis has shifted and uh, that the sun hitting the earth. I suppose if, if the person were really a, a techie type, if you could figure out you know, how far the, from the scriptures what it says, when, when is the sun going down, when is it going to get dark, maybe you could figure out the axis and how that had shifted. I don't know. Yes? Yeah, I'd like to share something. Sister Barbara's been on to me to share this. I 